Elon Musk is a man worth $191.8 billion at the time of writing this video. Sure, the majority of his time goes to running his two biggest companies, SpaceX and Tesla, but Mr. Musk won't deny himself the luxury of being one of the richest men on the planet. He will absolutely spend his cash on some of the craziest, out-of-this-world items that us normal, hardworking folk could hardly ever dream of. Today, we are taking a look at just what Elon Musk owns to get an idea of what it must be like to be a centi-billionaire. First, let's take a look at some of Elon's one-of-a-kind bling. Didn't take him for a jewelry guy? Well, truth be told, what we're going to show you wasn't bought by Musk. It was gifted. But that still counts as owning, folks. You know it's true. Check out the custom Tesla diamond and ruby ring crafted by jewelry designers of IF and Company, given to Mr. Musk by Ben Baller. Baller publicly posted about it on Instagram and was quoted as saying, please accept this one of one custom diamond and ruby hashtag Tesla ring for being an inspiration to me and my best friend Paul. He went on to say, we salute you for giving 50,000 jobs to Americans and putting USA back on the map as a serious contender in the auto industry. Aw, Mr. Baller, he's an inspiration to us all. We say you did the right thing. The ring's solid platinum and custom cut diamonds say Tesla on the back. On the front, Baller used a trillion cut diamond to showcase the famous Tesla T logo, which, by the way, is also surrounded by round, brilliant white diamonds and rubies set by hand. The price? $40,000. Next up, we want to take a quick trip down memory lane for Mr. Musk, back before he co-created PayPal. It was during this time that Mr. Musk owned a little website called X.com. This online bank, founded in 1999, was a huge step in why PayPal was so successful. In fact, back in 1999, Musk said, I think X.com could absolutely be a multi-billion dollar bonanza. Because if you're looking at the industry that X is pursuing, it's the biggest sector of the world economy. He wasn't wrong. X.com merged with a mobile payment security company, and the rest is history. PayPal is now used all over the globe and has an estimated net worth of $50 billion in 2021. But Musk's payday, oh, that came back in 2002 when eBay purchased PayPal for $1.5 billion. Elon has stated that his PayPal payout was 180 million bucks. Apparently, he put $100 million into SpaceX, $70 million into Tesla, and $10 million into Solar City. After it was all said and done, he also said he had to borrow money for rent. Hey, speaking of Solar City, this brings us to our next crazy thing owned by Elon Musk. Solar City is a subsidiary of Tesla and is headquartered in San Mateo, California. They market, manufacture, and install residential and commercial solar panels in the US. Their net worth? About $3.5 billion. And they show no signs of dimming anytime soon, folks. As of 2016, Solar City operates in 20 jurisdictions, including Hawaii and the District of Columbia, as well as 18 other states on the West Coast, the Southwest, and the Northeast. Shine on, Solar City. Shine on. How could we talk about crazy things owned by Elon Musk without mentioning his McLaren F1 hypercar, which he bought around the time of his PayPal payout? It cost $1 million. Nice purchase, Mr. Musk. We approve. It's powered by a BMW 6.1 liter, 627 horsepower V12 engine, and it was hand built out of carbon fiber. Top speeds, you're looking at 240 miles per hour out of this bad boy. Apparently, the engine compartment was lined with 24 karat gold as well. Want to see the car now? Well, you can't. Unfortunately, Elon totaled it. Too bad, too. At a recent auction, the car went for 20.5 million bucks. Hey, we got one more car for you real quick. Musk just so happens to own the James Bond submarine car from the hit Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. This car was the real deal and able to actually travel underwater. However, in the movie, the car transforms. And that was a bit of movie magic, unfortunately but that didn't stop Elon from buying it. He dropped a cool $997,000 on the car from a couple that had apparently found it inside of an old storage unit they bought for just $100. Boy, did they sure get their money's worth on that purchase. Turns out Musk has big plans for the car. He stated, I was disappointed to learn that it can't actually transform. What I'm going to do is upgrade it with a Tesla electric powertrain. 
and try to make it transform for real. We look forward to your progress, Elon. Musk also happens to own a Hyperloop train that is one mile long at SpaceX headquarters in Hawthorne, California. These trains are fast with an average speed of around 600 miles per hour and top speeds of 760 miles per hour. The version that's set up at SpaceX is just a prototype. The long-term plans are to have a train that links up San Francisco and Los Angeles. If they get the project done, travelers would be able to make the 350-mile journey in around 35 minutes. The costs for the Hyperloop train aren't too bad, all things considered. Just $6 billion for the passenger-only version and $7.5 billion for a larger version that can transport both passengers and vehicles. Man, leave it to Papa Elon to try and continue to improve everyone's quality of life. Did you know that Elon Musk is a fan of fire? He owns a limited edition flamethrower designed and branded by The Boring Company. The idea at the time was to drum up some buzz for the recently created Boring Company, as well as to generate a little revenue, turns out. The idea worked. Elon took straight to Twitter, tweeting out, Flamethrower, obviously best way to light your fireplace slash barbecue. No more need to use a dainty match to ignite. Soon afterward, 20,000 flamethrowers were made and sold at $500 each, netting his new tunnel digging company $10 million. SpaceX's Starship is up next, and we love this one, mainly because we are super proud of Elon that it also happens to be the world's tallest rocket. It's 390 feet tall, and the hope here is for this rocket to be reusable. Each launch, it will use $900,000 worth of fuel. Operational costs? That will look to be a bit more like the $2 million range. So what's the price? Well, Elon's been coy about this one. He's only stated that this Starship will roughly be four times as much as his Falcon 9 rocket to build. But we happen to know that the Falcon 9 is a $54 million rocket, which means his Starship, well, that's going to cost 216 million bucks. Did you hear that Elon is also creating some humanoid robots? Well, he is and we can expect to see them sometime next year. They will utilize Tesla's prowess with automated machinery, as well as their vast knowledge of autopilot driver assistance. The result? The Tesla bot. And apparently, it's designed to be friendly. They are looking to be about 5 feet 8 inches tall and weigh 125 pounds, and are designed to do repetitive menial tasks. Unfortunately, there's no price tag yet. But that hasn't stopped Twitter from guessing. We've seen guesses from anywhere between $10,000 and $250,000. We even saw one post claim you'll be able to buy it with Dogecoin. Well, we'll see about that last one. Last up, we want to mention Elon's primary home, which at the moment is a $50,000 Boxville Casita home located in Boca Chica, Starbase. Elon bought the home because, well, he's true to his word. He told the world via Twitter that he was selling all his possessions, and that included his mansions. Hey, the man is a minimalist. Nothing wrong with that. He doesn't even own a yacht like most of his billionaire cohorts. Elon Musk may claim to lead a modest lifestyle, but even he couldn't avoid jumping on the billionaire private jet bandwagon. Here's everything you need to know about Elon Musk's $26 million private jet. Musk owns four planes in total. These include two Gulfstream G550s and a Gulfstream 650ER, which add up to about 190 million US dollars. But Musk didn't start with four planes, and you never forget your first. He bought his first private jet in 2004, seven years before he became a billionaire. It was a Dassault Falcon 900B. Brand new, it would cost 26 million US dollars during its initial release in 1985. This particular model hasn't been manufactured since the year 2000, and they only made 156. In recent years, a pre-owned 900B would cost somewhere around 5 million US dollars. Although this jet is older and less popular than Gulfstream's, the Falcon 900B's design is described as way ahead of its time. And they're popular in the pre-owned market because they're easier to refurbish and maintain than other older models. The only downside is they cost $2 million a year to operate. You definitely get what you pay for, though. The interior of the 33-foot-long jet is luxurious and plush. The cabin layout has a galley, four large executive seats, and four narrower seats. They all recline and feature adjustable footrests. You get your own lazy boy in the sky. It accommodates 14 people in total. At the sides of the plane, there are wooden tables that can be folded down for extra space. There's also a collection of adjustable screens that provide entertainment on board. Though we doubt Elon Musk takes breaks long enough to catch up on shows. The jet can also be customized depending on the passenger's needs. It can be reconfigured so four seats face each other, in case couples want to dine with each other or friends want to sit super close together. 
Plus the rear end of the jet can be customized into a private cabin with a bed. And the room is outfitted with a TV and a heated luggage compartment. We're not sure why someone's luggage needs to be heated, but the option's there. Elon Musk owning a private jet or four isn't front page news. He's a billionaire and he travels a lot. A plane makes sense. But that's with the assumption that he's going somewhere that isn't feasible by car. The assumption proved to be incorrect earlier this month when Musk was caught taking off in his private jet from San Jose, California and landing in San Francisco less than 10 minutes later. For the non-Californians watching, that's about an hour by car. Most of us would tough out the drive because what choice do we have? But not Elon. According to Twitter, this short flight makes him a hypocrite because he advertises Tesla as an environmentally friendly company. More importantly, he advertises himself as environmentally friendly. Overall, planes actually cause less pollution than cars. However, that doesn't apply across the board. Private planes are between 5 and 14 times more polluting than commercial planes per passenger, and 50 times more polluting than trains. Not to mention that only 1% of the world's population own and operate private jets. That means that 1% of the world is producing 50% of the pollution. Long story short, you can't claim to be the green guy and then take your private jet for a 9-minute flight without the world calling you a hypocrite. Some fans came to his defense and pointed out that immediately following the 9-minute flight, he proceeded on to Austin, Texas. But it begs the question, why did he stop in San Francisco at all? And if you can believe it, there's multiple layers to this controversy. Jack Sweeney, a student at the University of Central Florida, started the Twitter account Elon Jet. This is one of his multiple accounts where he uses public flight data to track private jets owned by famous people. The reason this is controversial is Elon tried to bribe Sweeney to take the account down. And we get it, he's entitled to privacy. But the attempted censorship unfortunately happened right before Musk brought Twitter in the name of free speech. We guess he meant he wants to remain committed to free speech, as long as it doesn't make him and his business look bad. Thanks to Jack Sweeney, we know that Elon's fleet of four private jets is active almost every day and costs an average of $5,000 worth of fuel per trip. That translates to about 5,000 gallons of jet fuel per trip. Needless to say, private jet setting is for people with deep pockets. And not only is it expensive, but that's a lot of air pollution for a very small amount of people to travel. As special as the Falcon is, Elon isn't giving it as much attention these days. Even though he logs over 150,000 miles per year, the Falcon hasn't been seen in action since 2016. On the bright side, that means it can't be implicated in his recent scandals. But it does make us wonder what he's doing with it, if not flying. His Gulfstream G650ER sees the most action out of any of his jets. It cost him 70 million US dollars. He's probably trying to get his money's worth. It's his largest plane, but still only seats 19 people. The average commercial plane can accommodate closer to 140. It costs approximately $3,662 per hour to fly the plane. And according to his flight data, on average, he flies less than two hours at a time, which causes much more pollution than commercial flight. But we understand why he would prefer private travel. His Gulfstream is really luxurious and will make anyone feel like a VIP. It has a forward galley and four living areas. Within the galley, there's two storage compartments, a microwave and a convection oven. You can cook a three-course meal and make yourself a cocktail mid-air. That's definitely a step up from the cramped economy section most people see. The plane is outfitted with white leather seats and wood accents. They look spacious in the natural light that comes through the 16 oval windows. Gulfstream claims are the biggest in aviation. We've yet to see the trophy. The seats themselves are versatile. They can recline, spin and convert into beds. You can sit in any way that makes you comfortable while you watch TV on the two separate TVs. In the back, there's a VIP cabin with a sofa, a seat, and another TV. There's also two bathrooms on board, which should count as VIP sections based on their size alone. They both have a full-size sink and vanity, in addition to a toilet with enough legroom for an adult. That's rare in the airline industry. Unfortunately, Gulfstream makes sure to mention that they don't have a shower on board. We can't believe Elon bought it with such a huge oversight. We're kidding, of course. He has the most relaxing mode of transport known to man. 
we should all be so lucky. The G550s are extremely similar to the G650, but just a little less grand. Far East Movement never wrote a song about them, but it's still a nice plane. The main difference is a Musk's two G550s aren't registered to him. They're both registered to the shell company called Falcon Landing LLC, and rather than buying them new, he bought them pre-owned. Even if he's releasing tons of fossil fuels into the air, at least he's recycling the planes. According to Elon Musk, he doesn't own a home, a yacht, or take vacations. His only indulgence is the plane. And it is an indulgence. The cheapest private jets on the market are two million US dollars. And his all cost upwards of 20 million dollars. He's the real-life Iron Man, the mind behind Tesla, SpaceX, The Boring Company, PayPal, and more. He's known to work 20 hours a day, 120 hours a week, and has admitted to sleeping on the conference room table at Tesla just so he can squeeze in a little more work time. This man is Elon Musk. He's worth $170.3 billion at the time of writing this video, and he's been quite vocal about his daily routine. Time to take notes. We've got the breakdown for you right here. From what his mornings look like, to his workday, to even his hobbies. Hey, start implementing some of Elon's methods and you may find you're on the path to becoming one of the richest. Let's start right at the beginning of the day. For Elon Musk, that starts at 7 a.m. Musk makes sure that he will get six to six and a half hours of sleep each night. Through a bit of trial and error, he found that this is the perfect amount of sleep for him, and he prioritizes it. He was quoted in a Reddit AMA as saying, sleep is really great. I find if I don't get enough sleep, I'm quite grumpy. I could drop below a certain threshold of sleep. Although I would be awake more hours, I would get less done because my mental acuity would be affected. After he's up and moving, Musk usually skips his breakfast he finds that this will save him a bit of time in the morning, but this is not always the case. When he does eat, he makes sure it's a high-protein meal, like an omelet, and he'll have it with a cup of coffee. After that, Elon will take part in what he considers his most important daily routine, a shower. You heard that right. One of the richest men on the planet's secret daily routine is to hop in the shower. He claims that while he's hosing off, that's when some of his best ideas come to him. And believe it or not, there's some science to back this up. Shelley H. Carson, a researcher and psychologist at Harvard University and author of Your Creative Brain, a book all about unlocking your imagination and productivity, has stated taking a bit of time off from a problem is the best way for your brain to find the solution to it. She goes on to say that by focusing on whatever problem is in front of you for too long, you may develop inherent biases, and that will keep you thinking in the same unproductive manner. But doing a simple task like taking a shower and lathering up your hair can spark new parts of the brain, and this in turn can jumpstart some free association in your mind. Before you know it, you'll be more innovative, more productive, and more creative than before when you were a stinky, sweaty mess. And to think, Elon figured this one out on his own. What a guy. Another morning routine for Mr. Musk that is a bit more on the rarer side, but does indeed happen, is physical fitness. Although we do want to point out that when he appeared on Joe Rogan podcast, he confessed to Rogan, I wouldn't exercise at all if I could. Sounds like he's not much of a fan. But he does indeed get out and about. Musk will lift weights, run, and has been known to take part in Taekwondo, Karate, Judo, and Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Apparently, he likes to dance too, as evidenced by some of his, uh, shall we say, unique dance moves that he has displayed at a Tesla event. Closing out his morning, Elon will see his kids off to school and then drive over to either Tesla or SpaceX, usually in his Tesla Model X, a $79,990 car. Moving on to the midday of this billionaire, we find that he splits his time fairly evenly between his two largest companies, SpaceX and Tesla, with Tesla winning out ever so slightly in terms of weekly hours. For Musk, 42 hours of his week are spent at Tesla, and 40 are at SpaceX. And when he's at work, oh boy, you can bet he's giving it his full focus. Musk has stated he's not as good about his nutrition as he should be, and many times he will scarf down his lunch during an afternoon meeting. Speaking of meetings, Musk hates them. And honestly, we don't blame him. He has his time at work perfectly scheduled out, and meetings? They just get in the way of all the good stuff, like the engineering of his cars, making sure that they look and feel perfect, and also making sure his factories are running as efficiently as possible. Musk hates meetings so much that he has even sent out a list of rules about them to his workers. Large meetings are banned unless they are absolutely necessary. Frequent meetings are a no-no as well, and are only allowed if a matter is urgent. Any and everyone is allowed to walk out of a 
meeting at any time as soon as they realize they aren't needed. Musk doesn't want anyone to waste their time due to formalities. Finally, there is a ban on acronyms or nonsense words for objects, software, or processes at Tesla. The idea here is that anyone should be able to talk to anyone else in any department, and information shouldn't be stopped just because one department uses jargon that another isn't familiar with. In total, Musk has claimed he works 120-hour work weeks, but boy does it pay off. On average, per day, Elon will make $383 million. Uh, we're starting to feel like we aren't working hard enough. How about you? We feel like we have to say this though. Elon knows he works a bit much. He has gone on record to say, there were times when I didn't leave the factory for three or four days. Days when I didn't go outside. This has really come at the expense of seeing my kids and seeing friends. He's eased up recently, and it's more common for him to do 80 to 90 hour work weeks. But he also said this reduction is temporary. Here's what the end of the day itinerary is for Elon. He'll drive on home to his $50,000 boxable casita home. It's a 400 square foot prefabricated and foldable home, which can be pulled by a Tesla Model X luxury SUV. He confirmed this in a tweet. He said, my primary home is literally a $50,000 house in Boca Chica Starbase that I rent from SpaceX. Once home, he'll be sure to eat a huge dinner. Not necessarily the best way to calorie up, but for Elon, it works. Many times, business dinners are his main source of food, some of his favorite delicacies, French food and barbecue, and Diet Coke. He'll also sip on a whiskey or some wine every now and again. His time at home is also spent with girlfriend Grimes, worth $3 million, and their child. Elon will also watch some of his favorite TV shows, like Silicon Valley and Black Mirror, but he also has stated he loves anime, specifically Death Note. He's an avid gamer, with Cyberpunk 2077, a game that brought in $563 million in total sales revenue being one of his favorites. But he has also tweeted that one and only one console game has stolen his heart, and it was Halo. Other than that, Elon will be sure to read, there are claims that he will finish two books a day, listen to podcasts and audiobooks, and throw the occasional party. We're not sure how big a party he'll manage in his 400 square foot home, but we don't think that will stop him. He once rented a castle in England where the guests played hide and seek. If that's not a way to spend your 30th birthday, we don't know what is. It's lights out at 1 a.m. for Mr. Musk, and then he does it all again the next day. Inspired yet? Gonna try to up your productivity to match Mr. Musk? Well, hold on a second. No need to try and push yourself to be just like Elon. This dude is really one in a million. There are claims that his IQ is as high as 155. To put that in perspective for you, the average person typically will have an IQ of 100, and in the United States, the average is 98. Only a very small percentage of people have an IQ of 130 or higher. So, Elon? Yeah, the man is smart. Like, super smart. But get this. Musk has stated on Joe Rogan's podcast he doesn't believe people would like to be in his shoes, and that it's exhausting. But again, he's worth $170.3 billion at the time of writing this. We think it's worth it. Before we go, we want to leave you with a routine of another billionaire that will leave you scratching your head. Ingvar Kamprad, the former CEO of IKEA, who passed away in 2018, was worth 42.5 billion bucks and was known to drive a $22,000 Volvo that was 15 years old, would fly economy class, and eat at average everyday restaurants. Huh. He's one of the richest men on the planet. He has a net worth of $165.2 billion at the time of writing this video. He gave the world PayPal, Tesla cars, and The Boring Company. He also happens to be the subject of quite a few videos on this very channel. What would we do without him? The man in question is Elon Musk. And while you may think you know everything about him, what you may not have known is that he's living in a house that costs less than one of his Tesla cars. Much less, in fact. Today we want to talk about the minimalist lifestyle that is enjoyed by one of the richest men in the world. It just goes to show, money isn't everything, folks. So just how in the heck can Mr. Musk be living in a house that costs less than one of his coveted electric cars? Well, to answer that, we should first tell you that Elon has been quite vocal about beginning to live a minimalist lifestyle. On May 1st of 2020, Musk tweeted, I am selling almost all physical possessions, will own no house. Hey, if that ain't a mission statement of a minimalist, then we don't know what is. Twitter, as you can imagine, was rife with confusion. 
But guess who else wasn't too happy about this statement? That would be Musk's girlfriend, singer-songwriter, Grimes, worth an impressive $3 million. In a follow-up tweet, Musk stated, My GF at Grimes is mad at me. We wonder why, Mr. Musk. We wonder why. All joking aside, we have to commend Elon on his move away from the material and towards a life of simplicity and actually being a man of his word. Just as he said, Musk went ahead and sold his house. His Bay Area mansion was listed at $37.5 million. And now, everyone's favorite billionaire is living in a 400 square foot boxable casita model house. You heard that right. One of the richest men on earth lives in a 400 square foot home. The price? $50,000 well below the $200,000 price tag of the upcoming Roadster. So what is the appeal of a boxable home? We gotta say, it actually does have some neat features. The boxable casita is a foldable home that once purchased is unfolded on site. Right off the bat, this leaves a low carbon footprint and it means that you can essentially have a home wherever you want. In Musk's case, he chose Boca Chica, Texas. This puts him right near the SpaceX launch site. Basically, Musk has no commute anymore. These homes are surprisingly durable, too. It's made of concrete panels and steel, and installation is incredibly quick, as well as transportation being incredibly easy. Believe it or not, it's light enough to be pulled around by the Tesla Model X. Again, that's a car that costs more than this home at $79,990. Ah, but now we get to it. Just why is Elon doing this? What does he have to gain from getting rid of all the extra things in his life? Well, it seems that this could be Musk's way of leaving as little of a carbon footprint as possible. See, Musk isn't like the other billionaires of the world. He owns no luxury yachts and now no custom multi-million dollar mansions. This is how Elon has been living for years, so it's really no surprise that he's finally put his money where his mouth is and gone ahead and downgraded his home. And from the sound of it, Musk doesn't regret this decision at all. In fact, when he was asked about his $50,000 abode in Texas, he replied, My primary home is literally a $50,000 house in Boca Chica Starbase that I rent from SpaceX. It's kinda awesome though. Only house I own is the events house in the Bay Area. If I sold it, the house would see less use unless bought by a big family, which might happen someday. We gotta say, that's the Elon we all know and love. Maybe we could all learn something from this eccentric billionaire. Maybe instead of being like Richard Branson, worth $5 billion at the time of writing this video, and launching himself into space with the hopes of selling similar tickets for between $200,000 and $250,000 each, we should be a bit more like Elon. After all, when compared to his peers, he personally has one of the lowest carbon emissions among the billionaires of the world. Nice job. Mr. Musk. Hey, before we go, we want to leave you with some more celebrities that get a kick out of living the minimalist lifestyle. While they might not have gone as far as Elon Musk did and sold all their worldly possessions, we're sure you'll still be surprised at just how frugal these multimillionaires can be. Kristen Bell has been seen strolling down the red carpet in a $45 dress from Target. Leonardo DiCaprio's main ride is a $24,525 Toyota Prius. Elon Musk's net worth has skyrocketed in the past year. He's now worth about $131.7 billion and is the second richest person in the world. He recently passed Bill Gates on the richest billionaires list, and the gap between the two entrepreneurs will likely continue to grow. Gates plans to give away all his money, and Tesla's stock price keeps rising. So Musk has likely passed Gates for good. Musk is so wealthy that when he spends $1.35 million, it's like the average person spending a dollar. Could Musk pass Jeff Bezos and become the richest person in the world? Here's a look at Elon Musk's impressive fortune. 
Elon Musk is a lot richer today than he was just a year ago. The vast majority of Elon Musk's net worth is tied to the price of Tesla's stock, and the company's meteoric rise in the stock market has allowed Musk to become richer than Warren Buffett, Mark Zuckerberg, and even Bill Gates. In December 2019, Musk was worth a measly $26 billion. That's it? Today he's worth about $131.7 billion, although his net worth fluctuates by billions on a daily basis. Musk overtaking Bill Gates to become the second richest person in the world is big news, but it's not really surprising. In May 2019, Musk himself predicted that Tesla would eventually become a $500 billion company thanks to autonomous self-driving cars. Tesla's market cap at the time was about $45 billion. Investors clearly see the potential in the beta version of Tesla's full self-driving system because the company now has a market cap of about $550 billion. If Tesla is already worth more than $500 billion, how much will the company be worth when self-driving cars finally hit the market? Elon Musk is very different from most billionaires. He doesn't buy fancy yachts or expensive paintings, and he doesn't spend lavishly. He uses his Tesla stock options to invest in his own companies. Musk doesn't even buy stock in blue chips like Apple, Amazon, or Microsoft. After all, why would he invest in the competition? Musk says the only public security he owns is Tesla. He doesn't own any Bitcoin either. The only thing that Musk's invest in is himself. Musk owns at least 20% of Tesla's stock, and if he does ever sell a sizable portion of his holdings, it will be only only to fund his other ventures. Musk spent $100 million to found SpaceX in 2002, and today his stake in the company is worth about $15.3 billion. Experts predict that SpaceX could soon be worth as much as $100 billion thanks to Starlink, which is the company's groundbreaking satellite internet constellation. Musk has also invested $100 million of his own money into his neurotech company Neuralink in an effort to develop an implantable brain-machine interface. Scary. The Boring Company may be Musk's least interesting company. It did start off as a joke. However, Musk envisions a future where underground tunnels will be filled with vacuum tube trains and autonomous electric vehicles. That's why he's investing a lot of his own money into The Boring Company, too. In 2018, Musk contributed roughly 90% of the $112.5 million raised by the company that year. Most billionaires focus on one major company, but Musk has his fingers in many pies. Musk is even becoming a minimalist to fund all of his extraordinary business ventures. Last year, he said he plans to sell most of his possessions and then proceeded to put all of his real estate holdings on the market. Musk owns numerous mansions, but he wants to sell them all and instead rent a small house in Los Angeles. This is a huge 180 because just a few years ago, he was buying up all the mansions around him so he could have more privacy. At the time of his unbelievable declaration, he owned at least seven mansions worth about $100 million total. Musk recently sold his seven-bed, 11-bath mansion in Bel Air to tech billionaire Ding Lei for $29 million. He still has more mansions to sell, but it's only a matter of time until Musk completely liquidates his real estate portfolio. Musk's girlfriend Grimes was none too pleased with his decision to sell all of his mansions. The couple just welcomed a new baby into the world, so he should probably think about keeping at least one of his luxurious homes. Musk may not need a place to stay. He has famously been known to sleep on the floor at Tesla factories, but his family definitely needs a place to live. Just how rich is Elon Musk exactly? Let's put things into perspective. The median U.S. net worth is about $97,300. Divide $131.7 billion by $97,300, and you get approximately $1,353,545. That means that Musk spending $1.35 million is like the average American spending a dollar. Musk is so rich that he's worth more than multiple major American companies. His net worth is higher than the $115.05 billion market cap of Starbucks. A lot of us can barely afford to drink Starbucks coffee. Musk, on the other hand, could buy the whole company outright. The tech mogul is also worth substantially more than a number of major U.S. banks. His net worth is higher than Citigroup's market cap of $114.65 billion and Wells Fargo's market cap of $113.08 billion. Now it's easy to see why some people believe Elon Musk could be the world's first trillionaire. He's worth nearly as much as ExxonMobil, which has a market cap of $161.22 billion. How fitting would it be for not only Tesla to be more valuable than a major oil and gas company, but Musk himself? as well. Musk isn't just richer than some major corporations, he's also worth more than entire countries. Countries like Ukraine, Angola, Kuwait, Sudan, Morocco, Cuba, and Slovakia all have GDPs that are less than Elon Musk's net worth. Sure, most of the countries that Musk is richer than are developing nations, but it's only a matter of time before Musk is worth more than one of the world's major economies. New Zealand's GDP is about $206.93 billion. It's quite possible that Musk could be worth more than that by the end of the year.
It's only a matter of time before the world sees its first trillionaire. Some predict Jeff Bezos could be worth $1 trillion as soon as 2026. But what if Musk reaches that milestone first? Musk surpassed Zuckerberg, Gates, and Buffett so quickly, it's certainly possible that he could be worth more than Bezos sooner rather than later. It's really just Bezos versus Musk at this point. Gates and Buffett are giving away all their money, and Facebook's future looks very shaky. It all comes down to Amazon stock versus Tesla stock. The net worths of both Bezos and Musk are dependent on how much their companies are worth. Amazon is the third largest company in the world by market cap, and it regularly jockeys for the number one spot with Apple and Microsoft. Amazon is worth about $1.59 trillion today. That's almost three times more than Tesla. For Musk to be worth more than Bezos, Tesla stock would have to triple in value. That's possible, but keep in mind that Amazon also makes a lot more money. Tesla's Q3 2020 revenue was $8.77 billion, while Amazon's Q3 2020 revenue was a staggering $96.1 billion. We don't know what the future will hold, but Tesla has to become more than just a car company if Musk hopes to be worth more than Bezos. Many experts already think Tesla is far more than just an auto manufacturer. Tesla's services business, which includes self-driving, GPS, entertainment options, performance upgrades, and more, is expected to grow significantly over the next decade. Tesla is also involved in battery production, solar panels, and aeronautics. These segments could grow rapidly in coming years and eventually be more valuable than auto manufacturing. It's also possible that Musk's net worth could surpass Bezos Bezos's net worth and then crater. Tesla stock is in a bubble, and Musk's net worth would tank if that bubble were to burst. Musk would lose billions if Tesla's share price took a major hit. It's possible his net worth could drop all the way back to 20 billion. Boo-hoo. Amazon is involved in artificial intelligence, cloud services, and online retail. It's a very diverse business. Tesla will have to diversify as well if Musk wants to be the richest person in the world. SpaceX going public could also boost Musk's net worth. But so far, he has been reluctant to take the company public. Elon Musk isn't just taking over the world, he's taking over the universe. He's a visionary on the level of Steve Jobs, and in the future, it's likely his companies will provide goods and services used by nearly every person on the planet. Tesla, SpaceX, Neuralink, and The Boring Company will continue to grow, and Musk will get richer and richer. It's only a matter of time before a SpaceX astronaut lands on Mars and everyone is driving a Cybertruck. Don't underestimate Musk. He's worth about $175 billion today and could one day be a trillionaire. From solar panels to electric vehicles to colonies on Mars, here's a look at Elon Musk's vision of the future. The electric vehicle craze is taking over the world and it shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. That's all thanks to Tesla. The big three automakers are trying to catch up and even Apple is getting involved in electric vehicles. Let's face it, most consumers would rather have a Cybertruck than a Ford Mustang, even if that Mustang is electric. The success of Tesla has made Musk incredibly rich, and the company is expanding at a rapid pace. Musk founded Tesla way back in 2003, and today the company is worth about $750 billion. Musk owns 193.3 million shares of Tesla stock, which is about 20.7% of the company. The majority of his wealth is tied to the price of Tesla stock, so it's possible Musk could see his net worth plummet if the stock crashes. Still, underestimating Musk is never a good idea. Steve Jobs was fired from Apple in the 80s, and we all know how that turned out. Even if Musk is worth a mere $2 billion tomorrow, he will make a comeback. Musk devotes a lot of time to Tesla. He's the CEO and product architect of Tesla Motors, and he's been known to sleep on the floor of Tesla factories. To say he's a workaholic would be an understatement. When Musk reveals a new Tesla product, tech geeks and auto journalists pay attention. This has been the case ever since he revealed the Tesla Roadster back in 2008. When he revealed the Cybertruck in 2019, fans couldn't wait to get their hands on the futuristic pickup. Even a cracked window couldn't dissuade fans. There's no doubt that the $49,900 Cybertruck is going to sell gangbusters when it's released this fall. If you want a fully loaded and more powerful Cybertruck, you'll have to wait for the $69,900 model that's coming out next year. Demand for Tesla vehicles is so high that the company is building gigafactories around the world. Tesla currently has four gigafactories, one in Nevada, one in Buffalo, one in Shanghai, and one in Germany. This is in addition to the company's factory in California and its cluster of factories in the Netherlands. Tesla's Gigafactory 5 is currently under construction in Austin, Texas, where the EV manufacturer will build Cybertrucks and Tesla semis. Tesla has spent $1.1 billion building Giga Texas, and the company has received $68 million worth of state tax incentives. 
Tesla also has big plans for Asia. The company is planning to build a second Asian gigafactory, but the exact location is still a heavily guarded secret. Tesla is the electric vehicle leader, but the future of the company may involve a lot more than cars and trucks. Many financial analysts see Tesla as more than a car company. Tesla also makes batteries and solar panels, and the company will be instrumental in the fight against the climate crisis. That's one of the reasons why the company's stock price has skyrocketed in the last couple of years. Elon Musk has a bold vision when it comes to space exploration, and SpaceX might have an even brighter future than Tesla. Musk wants to send humans to Mars by 2026, and by 2050, he expects to send as many as 1 million people to the planet every year. Musk's plan to colonize Mars is incredibly ambitious, but he is making a lot of progress. SpaceX will send humans to Mars via the Starship Super Heavy Lift Launch Vehicle. And the aerospace company has built and tested 12 prototypes of the reusable spacecraft to date. Building and testing all of these prototypes isn't cheap. The Starship SN8 prototype cost about $216 million to build, but the cost will be reduced significantly once Starship reaches orbit. Musk expects Starship missions to Mars will cost as little as $2 million per launch. Sending humans to Mars is right around the corner. In May of 2020, SpaceX became the first private company to complete a successful manned orbital launch when NASA astronauts Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin traveled to the International Space Station via SpaceX's Crew Dragon spacecraft. SpaceX's Crew Dragon Demo-2 launch was a historic moment, and it marked the first time a crewed vehicle flew from U.S. soil since the retirement of NASA's space shuttle program in 2011. SpaceX launches attract plenty of media attention, but the company's Starlink Internet satellite system is where most of the money comes from. SpaceX has launched 1,023 satellites into space over 18 launches, and that number will drastically increase in the coming years. Musk says internet speeds will double this year thanks to Starlink, and financial analysts believe the satellite constellation will be worth more than $30 billion by 2025. SpaceX has grown dramatically since Musk started the company in 2002. He spent $100 million to launch SpaceX, and today the aerospace leader is estimated to be worth as much as $100 billion. We don't know the exact value of SpaceX since it's a private company, but there's no doubt that the inevitable initial public offering of SpaceX stock will be met with a lot of enthusiasm. Musk owns about 54% of SpaceX, and his stake in the company could one day be worth more than his stake in Tesla. Musk isn't just taking over land and space, he also has big plans underground. The Boring Company started as a subsidiary of SpaceX, but in 2016 it became its own entity. Musk wants to build a series of tunnels all across the world, and his vision could completely change the way we travel. He started the Boring Company to combat the terrible traffic congestion in Los Angeles, and cities all over the world want Musk to improve their infrastructure. Imagine a world where you drive your Tesla onto a platform at the side of the road and submerge underground into a highly complex network of tunnels. Just sit back and relax as the platform reaches a speed of 200 kilometers an hour and whisks you from one end of the city to another in minutes. The tunnels will even be big enough for Cybertrucks. We know this because Musk let Jay Leno drive a Cybertruck through the Boring Company's test tunnel in Hawthorne, California. The Boring Company uses massive tunnel boring machines to dig into the ground. The company's latest model, the Proofrock, is worth about $10 million. Musk and the Boring Company have plans to build a tunnel between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore in the near future, and they're currently working on a series of tunnels in Las Vegas that will connect McCarran International Airport, Allegiant Stadium, and various casinos along the Las Vegas Strip. There are even plans to extend the Vegas tunnels all the way to Los Angeles. The underground tunnels will no doubt be very useful. Hollywood celebs who want to travel from L.A. to Vegas to play poker or catch a boxing match will get a lot of use out of the L.A. to Vegas tunnel. The Boring Company makes more than just tunnels. The company made headlines when Musk got the bright idea to sell Boring Company branded flamethrowers for $500 a piece. The flamethrowers made the company $10 million in revenue in just 100 hours. Tesla and SpaceX may get the most attention, but the Boring Company is still very valuable in its own right. Musk owns a 90% stake in the company, and the business is estimated to be worth between $920 million and $1.5 billion. Musk is known for thinking outside of the box, so it was no surprise when he founded Neuralink in 2016. Imagine a future where you can control your smartphone or TV with a mere thought, thanks to a chip implanted in your brain. 
You'll even be able to communicate with another person via telepathy. It sounds like something out of a science fiction novel, but Musk is making it a reality. Brain-machine interfaces were initially created to treat serious brain diseases and allow paralyzed people to regain mobility. In the future, every person on the planet could have one of these chips in their brain, regardless of health. Last summer, Musk showed Neuralink in action when he unveiled a pig that had the company's V0.9 brain-machine interface chip implanted in their brain. During the tech demo, which was live-streamed on YouTube, Musk demonstrated how Neuralink tracked Gertrude the pig's brain activity. As Gertrude moved around her pen, ate straw, and sniffed things with her snout, Musk displayed her brain activity via a graph on a screen. The demonstration proved that Neuralink chips work, and shortly after, the breakthrough device was approved by the FDA. Neuralink expects to start human trials later this year, and Musk says that once Neuralink chips reaches the market, it will be as affordable as an iPhone. Willing consumers will have the chip installed via a futuristic surgical robot that is worth about $20 million, and the process will take mere minutes to complete. The Neuralink surgical robot, which was designed by Woke Studios, has a sleek look like an Apple device. The Neuralink robot surgeon will sew the chip's electrodes into your brain with perfect accuracy. There won't even be any bleeding. The good news is that the procedure won't hurt a bit because the brain does not have pain receptors. The layers of tissue between the brain and skull can feel pain, but not the brain itself. That's why brain surgeons can operate on people when they are awake. Would you be willing to let Musk implant a chip in your brain? Musk has invested $100 million of his own money into the company to date, and Neuralink is estimated to be worth about $500 million today. However, the company faces a lot of hurdles. No one has any objection to electric vehicles and space travel, but brain-machine interfaces are another story altogether. There are plenty of ethical implications of having a chip installed in your brain, but Musk believes that the brain-machine interface will play a vital role in human evolution. He is very worried about an advanced artificial intelligence taking over the world. The only way we might be able to stop a Terminator-esque apocalypse is to fight fire with fire. Humans are no match for AI, but humans with computers in their brains might just stand a chance. Did you know that Elon Musk once tried to sell Tesla to Apple? Tesla was only worth $60 billion at the time, which is a fraction of what the company is worth today. Last year, Musk tweeted that he reached out to Apple during Tesla's darkest days. The company was having difficulty producing enough Tesla Model 3Ss, and Musk wanted help. Apple CEO Tim Cook refused to take a meeting. In hindsight, it looks like Cook made a big mistake. That's it, folks. Thanks for watching.